All right, hey YouTube, my name is Kenny. Thank you for checking out the channel. So in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is working on this 2001 Yamaha Banshee frame. All right, everyone, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, turn on that notification bell, so that the next time I upload a video in this build series, you'll be notified and you can enjoy this kind of content with me. So in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is the thing that a lot of you hate. We're gonna be cutting some tabs off of this Banshee frame. I know a lot of people are like, oh, keep it stock, keep it factory. We're not doing that with this one. So we're gonna be cutting off the rear airbox frames, airbox mounts. We're gonna be cutting off the airbox tabs here. We're gonna be cutting off these ones here, here, here. We're getting this thing completely ready for powder. We're gonna be fouling off a couple of these little edges that we don't need. We're gonna be getting off the module here. We're gonna be tapping the screw. We're gonna be doing a lot of things to get this thing ready to be sandblasted and thrown into the oven. We're not gonna probably throw it into the oven. Well, we will throw it into the oven in this video at some point in time, but the catch is, I also have to get the swing arm and a couple other parts ready to be powder coated so that I'm not, when I do these parts, I like to get a uniform color on them. So, you know, two coats on both of them with about the same amount of time. That way I can make sure that my colors are as close as possible. So, let's go ahead and get the camera turned around, get into this, and we'll start getting some things cut off. All right, so I thought I had my camera on, but we got these cut off pretty close. What we're gonna do is just go around and cut off all the other tabs that we have around here. That way I can put the grinding wheel on and just do all the grinding at one point in time once I'm getting things cleaned up. All right, so we've done some hacking. We've gotten our tabs and everything cut off. So tab down here is gone. We showed you these here, these here is gone. We have those down there gone. We're gonna use our grinder here in a bit. We have these ones gone, up here gone, that gone, everything's gone. So we're actually switching now from our cutoff wheel, which is a thin one here that cuts the metal real good. And we're gonna switch over to my grinding wheel, which is gonna help me clean up things, a little bit more texture, a little bit more thickness. And that's gonna help me clean up all this other stuff and get it to where these surfaces are pretty smooth. And then I take a file and go over them and kind of contour up and down just to make sure I get it nice and clean to where I want it to be. But right now we're gonna start grinding, and get a little bit of footage of that. No need to go all crazy into that, but we'll be back on here in a little bit. All right. We have been about 35, 40 minutes on the grinder. I'm gonna get close up to it and let you all see what everything taken off looks like. Then what we're gonna do is we're working on a thread being redone. Probably gonna just drill it out and you do a nut zert. I kinda wanted to, I like that tool, it works really well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick as well. So here we are with those bump stops missing. So we got that all ground down good here. We have the front tabs missing for the Brake stays right here, that little weird clip thing that kind of locks it in there. We have the one here missing and we have that brake T gone. Coming on back, we have the air box tab missing here. Now this was already there just from the exhaust rubber. We're gonna take care of that as well. What you do is put your exhaust and put your piece of rubber like radiator hose around it. Now to keep that from vibrating it gets there, but it'll also keep it from rubbing that. But we did that one, and we also have gotten the two for here taken off. I am going to cut a little dash right there just so I can weld that because we're starting to have a little crack there, and I figured the easiest just to fix it before it gets worse on this one. So my plan is also we're going to put some nut zerts in here once we just make sure we get the threads, same threads. And I want to put nut zerts in here because I like to be able to attach my plastics without having to put the nut on the back. Just be able to secure those just like you would other places. But first we're gonna get this one tapped out and we're gonna go ahead and do the same with this one. So the first thing we're gonna do here is get our nut zert tool and I'm gonna thread in making sure this is an M6 that we have. Then I'm gonna take my tool over here and just go ahead and pair it up with my nut zerts here, which is a M6 here. So I'm gonna do the one up front I probably just do them both just I would do the one up front I'll probably do them both up front just to make sure they're uniform but we'll go ahead and get this one done all right so we already did the one side it's not necessarily it's not necessary that we do the other side but I'm going to keep it uniform 
So what I'm gonna do is take my step drill bit and drill these threads out. We're going to see if this one fit. I think I might have to go one size down. Okay, yeah. One more. All right. So we get our, this is an M6, which is the same size thread as here. And we thread it onto our tool. We'll put it down in the hole. Make sure it's nice and flush. Then we'll squeeze together. And it'll start to seed in there. So now it's seeded. So tighten it up a little bit more. Right there, I think we're pretty good. But I'm just going to see if I can do one more little crank. Yeah, that's nice and snug in there. Then you just unscrew it. New hole. Perfect. Now, I also have to do them right here on this side. So we're going to do them over here, and we're going to do it over there. And I'm going to make sure I just clean all that out first, just so I can make sure I have a nice, clean surface. And it's going to look good when it's all done. So that's it. That's how you use the nut zerk tool. What I'm going to do is also put them in here, like I said, so that they can hold on the rear plastics. And I'm going to put them in here just for the rear bumper mount. They don't come stock on these machines like that, but we're going to go ahead and put that on there because I like that touch. And come back when it's all done and go over it. No, this ain't it. All right, so you've seen how the nut zerk tool works. No problems, but I didn't put a whole, whole bunch of them in here. A couple of things needed to be fixed and adjusted, so we're going to get real close, talk about that, let you see that, then move on to the next phase. So it was a little pain in the butt to get into here and get that cleaned out, but I used my Dremel with a like bit. What are these called? Carbide bits, these little tips. Here, got all that cleaned out of there. So eight millimeter here, here, right there in there. Six millimeter here, which is the same as the rest. So put a six millimeter in here, six millimeter there, and an eight here, and it's also an eight there. So rear bumpers are gonna be good to go. Just screw in without having to do anything crazy out back, as well as the plastics and the gas tank and the front exhaust mount. Everything else looks good. We're actually at a phase right now with this that we can just start blasting it if we wanted to, which I might start in the next couple of days. But I want to go ahead and get the swing arm and all that stuff ready so that once I get the majority of this silver where I want it to be, we can get all the polished aluminum powder coat on at one point in time so I can keep it as close as possible. But let's start on the next step with this. It's going to be blasting. Ooh. About to go in the oven for the bake. Get all the grease and stuff off, all the water that might be in the tubes out. Yeah. All right. So here we are, blasted, powdered. So we have our layer of powder on there already, looking really good. But this is just my setup that I use to blast outside. So I basically use this big old piece of plastic. It's what I use to put under the foundation of my concrete but I have some left over. So I use a big piece of it, put it out there. I also use my Harbor Freight uh, 100 pound hopper. Right there, I fill it in with two bags of media, which is 100 pounds. Hook it up to the DeWalt 60 gallon air compressor and I blast. It took me probably, I would say 200 pounds. And when I say that, I mean that I just had to fill the hopper back up one more time. After I blasted it all out, I was able to gather up off the tarp, put it back in there filter it, strain it, and use it one more time. So if you didn't and you just blasted your media out, it'll be like four bags or something. But we have the frame here. Gonna take a quick look at it up close and get it in the oven. Now I'm not sure if we can see anything. Let me see, can I get the brighten up? But frame looks real good. We have the polished aluminum on there. Looks good. Coated real evenly, nothing missed, no issues anywhere. No problems. So you see, I don't have my threads plugged, but I use a thread tap and I will go through and retap all the threads. That's just something I'll do anyways, just to make sure I got all that grit and stuff out. So we're good. 350 degrees for 10 minutes in the oven or 375 degrees for 10 minutes in the oven. 
We're going to go ahead and have that set. We're going to put it in there let it gloss out. We're going to leave it in probably about, it says 10 minutes. You want it to be pretty much cured, and then we'll clear it after that. So we're going to go ahead and get that in the oven and bring it out and then clear it after. All right, let's take a peek. Man, that looks good in there, don't it? Ooh, man. Mm -hmm. So why are we in there like working so hard to be more emotionally stable, more securely attached? Make and the question, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make the question see. When are developing themselves in your mind? Then what? Yeah. And then like yeah, so like, where does the... Now that was in the oven and it came out looking absolutely pristine and I got freaking dust all in my freaking face and eyes. But right now, it looks white. So if you don't know, the clear vision goes on white. The biggest challenge that you have with this when you do a white frame, making sure that you get it all covered. So what you're doing when you're looking for doing a white frame, the white frame will typically come out gloss white. So what you're gonna do is powder every area that is still shiny. So you really have to pay attention to make sure you don't have any shiny parts and any not like thin parts. So we're not working on that today, but we're gonna be doing this one and getting it in the oven. This is gonna be the final cure. So hopefully it comes out looking all great. <laughs> and then we'll just get this thing down here, sit out and look at it once we're done. So we're just gonna tap all the threads, we're gonna thread tap through it, eight millimeter here. All right, everyone, so you saw there in that little quick snippet, I did run the thread tap through everything. Down here, it is a, down here they are a 10 millimeter. I looked it up, I think it's a 1.25. Yeah, 1.25. Most of the standard kits come with a 1.5, so make sure if you're gonna buy a thread tapping kit, you buy the additional ones that you're gonna need to do this because you don't want to retap these threads for something that it doesn't belong. These all were an eight. Right here were a six. And these up here were a five. So we got them all thread tapped and everything looked good. We're gonna get close up to this frame. Let you all take some good looks at it and uh, we're gonna be closing this video up. All right, yeah, so this frame looks wonderful. So polished aluminum, looks really good. We did mask off the VIN number as I will do with all frames that I do. We masked off up here to make sure the steering stem bearing went back in as it should. We eliminated some of those useless little brackets that were here and those spots that go on here for the OEM airbox because he's running pods on this. He was fine with removing those bump stops for the original um, exhaust. Yeah, I mean, the Tours delete, the little module sits here. We don't need the bracket there for the brake line, but you know, like that bracket right there that's on that, we don't need any of that. So we deleted all those, blasted it, got a good bit of this little over, I don't know if these are OEM welds or not, because you never really know because these machines have do have some age on them. But yeah, this looks wonderful. Freaking hammer meets nail on this one. I mean, I did, I'm patting myself on the back. What I also did to help my man out was I put nut zerts in here, as you see. So these nut zerts allow you to go ahead and just screw in without having to worry about holding anything on the back side. So like right here, these are here and these are gonna be a six millimeter, but they do not, do not come factory on there. So these were added and it's a nice little touch. Everything looks really good. If you wonder why that looks like that, I just try not to put too much powder or anything on there because that is where the brake will go on and you want that to be able to be not too tight and function and move so if push comes to shove I will use a foul and foul a little bit of that clear off but overall we're good got a whole bunch of crud in the background that we're going to have to take care of but this is going to be a press thing looking machine when we're done all right everyone we're going to close this one out thank you for checking out this video make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of content we're going to go through a few other parts it's going to be a good bit of little series going through here the thing is, is my original plan was to do each individual part, but the problem with that is gonna be 
time. I mean, I don't want to have to load and load, unload and unload the guns with the powder. I like to just be able to get all the black done, all the blue done, all the green done, whatever color, all of it done, rather than kind of go individual. But we'll make sure we get good content of what we're doing here. And uh, everything's going to come out like this, and this is going to be looking like a brand new machine. As you do see, I have another Banshee frame right there that I powder coated, the darker color, but man, both of these came out mint. So if you're wondering what kind of, you know, all right, so if you're interested in any of the work that I do, here is the 05 Banshee that I did here, and here is the Raptor 700.